Alright folks, so this is the uh, finished product, or pretty dang close to the finished product. Flipping that switch turns this on and shows we got a charge of 12.5 volts. This is my output, this is my input that's going to come off the solar charger. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a quick overview of the box and how it's configured. And then if you want, let me turn this off. If you want the specifics on how I built it, you can go ahead and watch the rest of the video. So when you look inside the panel here, or the box here, you'll see a couple of different things. The first is uh, this Goal Zero Nomad 7. So this is a 7 watt solar charger. And uh, I get that there's other companies that make solar chargers a little bit cheaper, but uh, I've used Goal Zero for a while now, and I find that uh, they make great quality products. And then uh, I'm going to keep using them because I think that, that they're, they're very good. This charger has a couple of different outputs. I have USB. I can chain them together. I've got uh, a, a specific charging device, and then I have 12 volt. And so what I use, and I keep this in here as well, this is just a 12 volt charging socket that will come off of the solar panel, and I'll use a male-to-male -male plug to go ahead and charge the box. And then I have this, just for saving space, I put it in that socket. I can put this in the output, and then I can go ahead and I can charge USB off of this. See when I turn that on, that USB comes on. Just taking a quick look at the at the box, you'll see from the video, we got a 4.5 amp hour battery. I know that that's small, it's a lead sealed battery, but uh, that's what would fit in this box. I got a solar controller that uh, protects me from overcharging and undercharging my battery. And so anyhow, that's it. If you want to know the specifics and the rest, go ahead and watch the video. Thanks everybody. Alright, for those of you that are following along, with uh, this is going to be part two of the solar generator uh, go kit charger, battery, whatever you want to call it. Um, anyhow, this is Velcro industrial strength, and this stuff is strong. It's real strong. Uh, the last battery box I built, I used this, and I could barely get the battery out. And so what I want to do is I want to use this Velcro. It's a, This is a four foot by uh, two inch sections. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to Velcro the battery in here. And I actually think I like it right here. And I'm going to Velcro in this battery charger. It is uh, it's a little dark right there. Let's see if I can light that up. It is a um, not a complicated process. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that, and I'm going to come back when I'm done. All right, so these are Velcroed in. Pretty good. Uh, this Velcro also takes a little bit of time to set to the, to the case. So what I'm going to do now is I want to establish a center line on here where I can mount my ports. So what I'm going to do is actually just drop this flashlight in here. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to do this. This flashlight might be a little bit too big. That works. Well, maybe it doesn't. Let me see. So what I want to do is I want to mark the case with a pencil. And what that does is it gives me a zone to, I don't know if you can see it on that side, um, a zone to work with. So what I can do is I can establish a center line, I can cut the holes to mount my ports. Alright, so what I have here is a grid. And what I'm going to do is at each one of these intersections, this is an inch, inch and a half, inch and a half, and then an inch. So what I'm going to do at each one of these intersections is I'm going to drill a pilot hole. And then after I drill that pilot hole, I'm going to use this, it's called a step bit, to drill the holes out the sizes that I need them. And it's about an inch is what I'm looking at. Uh, so let me go ahead and drill the pilot holes and then I'll be back. All right, folks, so here's here's where we are. I installed the voltmeter, and then these are just 12-volt sockets. One of these is going to be going in, and one of them is going to be coming out. I ran out of space on here. I wanted to put a fourth one of these, one specifically for just USB. But if you take a look in here in the box, you can see it's a pretty tight fit. And remember, we're keeping this space open for the solar panel that's going to fit in there for storage. So there really wasn't much I can do. The last thing I have left is I want to put a button here, and I have a rocker switch, but I didn't like the way the rocker switch was acting, so I'm going to go look for just a, and it was an accessory rocker switch, I'm just going to go for just a, just a straight up on off switch, no accessory light, um, I'm going to see how that goes, I'm going to try to put it in right about here, and that will control the voltage, so we'll be able to turn this on and off, which will be tapped right to the battery. So, this made it a million times easier, last time when I built one of these I used a Dremel tool to do the holes. And uh, this you just countersink, drill a pilot hole, and then you just countersink this until you hit the size 
of the outlet that you're going to put it in there. It took maybe 10 minutes to do this. It was really great. And then one of the other things I did, which is a little bit of a pain in the ass, is, let me get this out of the way, is I built some cables. So this is going to run a 5 amp fuse in here. And then I put the connectors on here and then some heat shrink tubing. And then I made a bunch of them uh, for all the devices that are going to connect into the uh, solar charger, which is a charge controller and an overcharge protector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to wire this up and then I'll come back and show you what I did. This is going to be going in. This is going to be coming out. I'm not going to wire up the voltage meter today because I don't have the switch. So I'm just going to wire up these two and then I'll show you what I did. All right, so you can see what I did is I ran a positive from this side of both of these up into the punch block. And that was a total pain in the ass because my screwdriver is just a little bit too long to fit in the box. But uh, I was able to get it done. Next thing is I'm going to wire the battery into the charge controller. Like I said before, this, the power on and off switch for the voltmeter and the voltmeter are not going to go in until tomorrow. Now this voltmeter is going to be wired into here, the battery block, in parallel with the battery. That way I'll be able to pull a reading off the battery and ascertain its true voltage, which is an indicator of capacity that's been used or is left in the battery. So anyhow, that's going to be the next steps. And then I'm going to have to try to clean these up a little bit. Um, I made these the um, the cords that I, that I heat shrank on there were a little bit too long, so I'm going to have some trouble getting the solar panel in there. So yeah, that's where we are. I'll be back after I wire up the battery. Alright, here we are. Battery's wired up. So you can see it's plugged into the power block and it's coming off the battery here. You can see that. See the wires. Now there's no fuse in here yet. This is an inline fuse. I'm going to plug it in now. And once I do that, this thing is hot. Well, I'm going to try to put it in here. The camera makes things difficult. It's kind of in the way. Now, a couple of problems. One is you can see how high these, because I put so much heat uh, tubing, shrink wrap tubing on there, I'm not sure I'm going to get the lid shut. So, fortunately, I used Velcro to mount this charge controller, and I've got some space down here so I can move it down. You can see that we're getting juice to the charge controller now. Let's go ahead... Let me see if I can. I'll be right back. I'm going to see if I can find a, a, a charger. This is going in. This is coming out. So we're going to charge in here. We're going to see if I can charge my phone. All right, we're back. Sorry about that. Let's go ahead and plug that baby in. So we're getting power. You can see that light came on, which is a good thing. And then uh, let's plug this. I got cords everywhere making a giant mess. Let's plug that in. I don't know if you heard that or not. But uh, you can see right there. See if I can focus in on it. Oh, that didn't help. Now, did it? Let's see if I can lock the auto white. There we go. Anyhow, it's charging the phone, which is a good thing. A little bit of a charge signal up there. So that means coming out works anyway. We still need to test going in via the solar panel. We still need to wire up the low voltage. So I'm going to do that over the next day and then I'll come back and show you that. Alright folks, so here's where we are. We have the three ports, voltage meter, output, input, and then I added this switch today. And then uh, when I flip this switch, you get a voltage reading. Now this isn't the original switch that I put on here. Uh, I put on a push button switch. This is an uh, accessory rocker switch. This is the one I was having some problems with, but the push button switch stuck out almost an inch. And I was really afraid that uh, if I would bump into something, it would turn the box on. And I don't want that. One of the main reasons is, is that I'm going to turn this on. You can see that LED light up down there. There's going to be a solar panel in here, and I'm worried about that. So I took a couple of these uh, cable wraps, cable ties, and I tied up a lot of the similar cords. And then what I did is I cut the negative that was coming out of the charger for the battery line, I cut the negative and I put the switch in and then I just wired up to the battery. And the reason I did that, and some people may like, that's not a good idea, it allows me to read the voltage of the overall circuit and this is just wired up to be an open circuit when it's off. So that way when I turn this off, it turns everything off. You can't charge, you can't draw, you can't measure voltage. And so that way when it's off, I don't have to worry about draining the battery or have to worry about overheating or venting or gassing or any of that other kind of stuff. I'm not an expert, so opinions are welcome. 
and then we're running this off of a 5 amp fuse. So anyhow, there's the inside of the box. And uh, I'm going to call this done with one exception. On this side here, I'm looking for, and I just haven't found one yet, a one inch graded vent or louvered vent. Whatever I can find. I want to put one here. Um, this box is not a waterproof box. It's not even a water resistant box. I'm going to call it a water, a splash proof <laughs> box. These are all marine grade, but I didn't seal them. Uh, and the reason I did that is this isn't going to be on a boat. This is probably going to sit in the back of my car. It's going to sit on my desk at work. It's going to, it's just a man portable, rechargeable energy source that I'm going to use solar panels for so that when I'm out in the wild, I can charge things like a ham radio, a cell phone, a tablet, a GPS, or internet hotspot. And I want to put a little louvered vent on this side here just to make sure that nothing builds up inside in terms of pressure or gas from the battery being charged or discharged. Alright folks, that's it.